What's up everybody? Jake here from Off-Road Rodeo and today I'm here with two products from Kemimoto. I have the Honda Trail CT125 center rack that Kemimoto makes and then I also have the center rack bag for the CT125 center rack that they make. Um, Kemimoto sent me these. I was not paid to make this video. Uh, they sent me these free product samples and so I'm going to get these installed on the bike. We're going to see what they look like. I will give you my first impressions of them, and then I am going to test these products out this week on the Smoky Mountain 500. So stay tuned. Let's get the rack installed and see what it looks like. All right, so this is everything that came inside the box. This is the rack itself, our two mounting brackets, and then a bag of hardware. And it looks like it comes with a tool as well. And then also inside that bag was the instructions. And don't mind, mine are ripped, but we can see up here at the top. Kemimoto says installation estimated time is 10 minutes. So let's see if that's truthful or not. And because I will be riding off road on bumpy roads and dirt roads and maybe even some single track, uh, I'm going to make sure that I use Loctite. And I'm going to use a Loctite glue stick. Just a little easier to get it on the threads this way, but this is what I prefer using. And definitely going to make sure that I use this so that none of these bolts come undone while I'm riding. So we can see that step one says to take the little tiny bolts put them through the main rack into the mounting bracket, and then obviously put the nut on the backside, make sure that the bracket is pointed down and that that is pointed forward. Then we can take the included socket and the four mil and we can tighten these down. So step two is going to be removing these three bolts where the rack is actually going to mount. And that is right in the center, and then two right by the top of the crash bar. And I'll show you on the actual Honda Trail. That's going to be here, here, and here. It should be noted for this section that I'm using a six millimeter with an extension on a socket. There was not a six millimeter included in my kit from Kemimoto. Step three is going to be going to the spots where we removed the bolts and in their place, we're going to put these cylindrical spacers. The long ones are going to go above the crash bars, and the short one is going to go in the center of the Honda Trail. Step four is to position the rack into its correct place and then add the bolts. Remember to Loctite your bolts so that they don't back themselves out when you're riding on bumpy terrain. The two long bolts have a five millimeter head and the short bolt for the center has a four millimeter head. Because all of these bolts are long, I'm going to use a ratchet to tighten them down.
Because all of these bolts are long, I'm going to use a ratchet to tighten them down. And this is it installed on the bike and completely secure. It's now ready to have the bag mounted to it. And just some thoughts during the installation of the rack. I'm not really sure why Kemimoto did not include a six millimeter, probably because it would have to be long. Um, so if you do this, if you get this rack and you install it yourself, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a six millimeter socket with an extension because it's going to be necessary to do these guys. Otherwise, this was super easy and it did take about 10 minutes to do in total of work time, not including the time that I was setting the camera up to get the correct shots. Just a few more thoughts and comments. I do like the look of this rack. I think aesthetically it matches the bike very well, um, but I wish that Kemimoto had used a more durable matte finish on it. Uh, you can see where I bumped it a few times during the installation or putting it back down on the ground while I got the correct tools and I actually put little scuff marks into the matte paint. So if they use a more durable finish in the future, I think that that would be good. However, this is meant to carry luggage, and so it's going to get scratched anyway. But that's just a small complaint. Overall, I like it, and it does match my front rack from a different company, and I think that that's pretty neat. So now that we have our rack installed, we can put our center bag on. And this should be an easy installation process because there's just four straps that are going to hold this on. Uh, these two are going to loop through the rack, and I'll show you what I mean by that. And then this is going to loop through the rack, go through this tab right here, and then Velcro back onto itself. So let's get this installed so you can see what I'm talking about and what this looks like on the trail. So I have the other side mounted, but basically the way this is going to work is we're going to take this... We're going to loop it down through this big hole. We're going to loop it back out through this slot. We're going to come up into this loop. And then we're going to pull this tight. And then for the front, our tab is up in here. We're just going to undo this Velcro. We're going to run this side through this hole right here. I don't know if you can see that. This one right here. And we can grab a hold of that and pull that pretty snug, honestly. And then we're going to take this outer strap. And we're going to loop that around. And that is how we tie this guy down. And honestly, I like this a lot. I think it's pretty neat. You can see that it makes... Basically, it fills that gap and makes this level with the seat, which is pretty cool. Let's open this up so that you can see the top of it and the inside of it um, and see what it looks like from above here. So this is the top of the bag. We have a zippered, and I would presume waterproof, yes, waterproof seam right here, pocket for a map or your cell phone or maybe another electronic device or your wallet. Um, and then we have a waterproof seam around here. So let's unzip this. There's zippers on both sides and then Velcro right here. So it's not completely waterproof, but it's at least weatherproof. And then it comes with a carrying strap. The inside here, we have netting with another zippered pocket. We have a zippered pocket on this side. We have like an elastic pocket on this side and then another zippered mesh pocket on this side. And they used a nice, like, dark orange, like, rust-colored interior lining so that you don't lose anything down in there. And this is going to be handy. I'll probably put my GoPro uh, accessories in here so that they're close at hand, or maybe a camera and a first aid kit. So... That'll just be a nice, easy way to make sure that everything is secured. So we will close this. 
And then we will pull these zippers. I like that it closes towards the rider. And I like that this tab kind of tucks in front of the seat so that it ensures that this bag stays closed and retains its shape. But that's it guys. That is the installation of the center rack for the CT125 from Kemimoto along with the installation of their center rack bag. Um, I'm going to have more thoughts on this in just a few days after I do the Smoky Mountain 500 and I'll get some videos throughout just to kind of show you what I filled the bags with and how they're performing. So this past weekend, I was actually able to test the bag out when me and four other guys rode the Smoky Mountain 500, which is a dual sport route through Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. We rode to and from the route and ended up with about 700 miles of riding total for the weekend. And we rode in a variety of conditions from hot and sunny to damp and rainy. We crossed creeks, we crossed a river, and we rode really bumpy, rocky terrain as well as a bunch of pavement. And so I was really able to get a grasp on how this bag performs in all of those conditions. And I can fill you in on what I like and dislike about it after using it for that amount of time. So let's start with the things that I liked. I liked that I was able to use the bag to control the bike better through corners and over bumpy terrain. I was able to hold on to the bag with my legs the way that you would holding onto a tank on a regular motorcycle. And I found that really useful in making the bike more stable and controllable. The second thing I liked is that the bag never ever moved. The bag is firm on here, right? There's play right now because it's empty, but when the bag is fully loaded, it did not move the whole weekend. And I thought that that was really cool. I also liked that in the rainy conditions and through the creek crossings, none of my gear got wet. Now, I don't think the bag is completely waterproof, but it does have waterproof seams at the top and that really helps keeping the rain out. Additionally, I liked that I was able to put a phone or wallet up top here, and that I was able to see it when I looked down and know that it was there and that I hadn't lost it anywhere along the ride. It does have a zippered pocket, and that kept dust out of the inside of this as well. I did like that the inside of the bag was orange, and it made things easy to see, including my GoPro accessories, which are black. And sometimes they can be difficult to find in a black bag with a black interior. I liked that it came with zippered pockets and an elastic pocket. And you can see that I actually still have some breakfast in that one. But it made it easy to cordon things off into what their purpose was. And I was able to honestly fill this with a lot of useful things. I had my first aid kit in here, paper towels and tissues, GoPro accessories, as well as food and snacks for the trip. And honestly, it was really nice that they were all close at hand and easy to access. One of the things I did not like about the bag is that its operation requires you to unzip both sides and then flip the Velcro up. Now, that's not that big a deal, but I feel like this bag would be more effective if it didn't have this Velcro piece and if it zippered all the way around this edge where the seat is so that you could just have one zipper or two, but have one that's easily maneuverable that you could just zip around the whole thing so that you could put something in or take something out during your ride if you need to. I found that it was kind of cumbersome to try and do that while riding. You could unzipper one, but you'd only have this amount of space to get something in because this top piece is firm. This has some sort of backing in it that prevents it from being foldable. Additionally, I don't like the fact that the seat is touching the bag here. Now, that's not a big deal while stationary, but when you go to get gas, it becomes an issue because when you open your seat to access the fuel, the bag and seat make contact and the seat pushes into the bag, pushes the bag down, and I'm sure at some point this will wear out either the bag or the seat. So I think by putting the zipper up top, you'd avoid any sort of contact like that or wear. I think primarily it's this lip that's touching. One of the things that I do not like about the rack is that on the other side of the motorcycle, the non-drive side or right side of the Honda Trail, there's plenty of space between the rack and the plastic body pieces. However, on this side of the Honda Trail, the drive side or left side, 
the rack has a very, very small tolerance between the plastic and the rack itself. And you can see that there actually is a small rub mark on this plastic part of my frame. Now that probably could have been negated by putting some sort of protective film over it, like 3M helicopter tape. But I feel that this is something that should have been accounted for by Kemimoto. I think that a way to avoid this might be using a small washer in between the rack and the spacer that goes down in the center. That would probably get this a little bit higher, although I'm not sure how much thread that would leave going into the actual um, mount on the, the top of the plastic here. But that is a small complaint. Some people might not care about that. And again, I think that if you put some sort of protective film there, it won't damage your plastic. In conclusion, I really like the rack and bag from Kemimoto. I thought this was a really good setup to have on the trip I just did on the Smoky Mountain 500. It was really nice having important items close at hand, having them easily accessible, but knowing that they were also protected from the elements. Overall, I think that there's a few things that they could tweak to make it better in the future, but I think the current iteration is totally acceptable and honestly would make a really good addition to any bike. I'm going to continue using this as I commute around town, do day trips, and do more overnight trips in the future. If you have any questions at all, please let me know and I will do my best to answer them. And Kemimoto has also been kind enough to include a discount code for the rack in the bag, which I will put here in the video, and also down in the description with links to both the rack and the bag. Thanks for checking this video out, guys. And once again, I was not paid to make this video. I was sent free product samples that I put to the test on the Smoky Mountain 500, and these thoughts are totally my own with no input from Kemimoto. Thanks for checking this video out, and I will catch you next time.